to see, see if this is going. going. How's, How's it going? going? How do you How pronounce, pronounce that? Heart. Harzlo, Harzoro, Harz, Harzoro, Harzoro. <laughs> yes, you made it. We've got this. Um, I'm trying a few new things out, so it may take me just a wee bit to get situated. Uh, I'm I'm trying to get broadcasting on Facebook as well, but I am working on that. Connect. Not really sure how Facebook works. Oh, Jarl Zorro. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yes. Okay, we've got we're, we're going up and live on. Looks like we're live on a uh, YouTube as well. We're we're great on Twitch. Now I have, I have no, no idea, idea if, if how, how to go, to go live, live on on a Facebook. Facebook. Who knows? Just looking real quick. Uh, who knows? I don't know. Sculpting art game art. Who knows? Yarl Zorro, I like that name. Okay, so, so we're, we're just, just going to continue, continue off, off um, um, until, until I figure I out sculpting. Facebook to see if I'm even going on it. I cannot tell how to do Facebook Live. Blands, how's it going? Yes, let's go. We're getting there. We're getting there. I have no idea how to connect to this thing. Okay. Da, da, da. This is the weirdest. Okay. Well, I tried. I tried Facebook. Gonna have to postpone, postpone that, that until, until next week. week. Tiago, Tiago Sculpts, Sculpts, how's it going? How's it going? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. So, so we'll, we'll just, just jump, jump in to continuing this, this young, young lady, lady. Uh, uh, by uh, artist Patrick. Patrick. And I'm, I'm gonna. He said he said his name really well, but I'm not. I'm gonna. Belanovsky. 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 There we go. Patrick Bolanowski, um, super nice guy. Like I had a, a chance to chat with him a little bit this week, and he's like super awesome dude. Like it makes me like his. He's so cool that it makes me like his art even more. So that's you know he's just a good, good, good solid guy, and awesome artist. So we'll keep going on this um, as I've you know now stepped away and kind of coming back. To this, I'm seeing some like 
things that are bugging me. So we'll do some quick cleanup on that. Um, Angry Monday. Howdy, howdy, howdy. And if anybody knows like what I'm supposed to do to go live on Facebook, um, I've put in, just let me know, just send me a message on Twitch or YouTube. Um, because it does not work. Yeah, I got that. Go live. I need to add it. It says I need to add a title. Okay, let's see. I am sculpting live title. It's going well. It's like it's been, it feels like it's been a long week, but it's actually just been a really hot week. Tags, 3D, sure. Um, the go live button. Connect. I'm almost there. Oh my gosh. I, I apologize for this. This is just horrible. And it says I'm connected via my restreaming app. Whatever the hell this is. Channel. I'm going to just do refresh. Hopefully this doesn't kill everything. I may just have killed everything. Who knows? Still connected. Go live, add a title. This is so weird. Okay, we're going to forget, forget about, about Facebook, Facebook today. today. Um, if it's, it's not going to work, work, it's not going to work. work. I'm not going to... I want it to work. Oh well, that was my last attempt. Making sure all my things are muted. Okay, let's get into this. We're gonna just we're just gonna get sculpting. I think that's the best way to go. And anyways. So, so I'm going to just, just quickly, quickly do, do some, some updates, updates on this, on this gal. gal. sounds of whatever that we're listening to. Trying a few different things out this week. Trying a different approach to the music. Um, this may just be a little too crazy. Do that.
Sometimes when you try to move things, and if you don't have like the center mast, it gets all quirky. Samples not turn off because I have my spotlight reference turn on. And this is where I'm going to start changing the concept just a little bit. I mean, not the concept, but just um, this one I'm, I'm going to be more focused on the overall like appeal. Oh my goodness, I'm going to go through all night doing this. For some reason, reason I have I had a hotkey hot assigned for a for long time to for pinch, pinch. and for, for some, some reason, reason it lost it when I upgraded to ZR uh, or to the 2018.1. So how's everyone doing this week? Has everybody seen the Ant-Man? I have not, so no spoilers. Harry Mandibles, aloha, how's it going? I don't these little hairs look great because I already went through and worked with her a little bit. Finally got a, catch, a chance to catch me live. Oh no. Oh no. A thumbs up on Ant-Man. Yeah, I want to see it tomorrow. We'll see. Like, this is, we're getting caught in the summer months. And we are like, so my wife and I are expecting our fourth child um, in September. And I don't know if any of you out there have kids. We have, we have three boys already um we don't know what number four is we're gonna have that be a surprise because i believe that is gonna be our last child um so we you know we figured out oh, we've got four already or three already surprise isn't gonna change anything or you know the gender is not gonna change anything for us um, so, what was I talking about? Anyways, so my wife I always kind of goes, she goes through like a, a nesting phase. I don't know if anyone else has got children out there. That's what I'm going through. She's going through a nesting phase. And this one's probably as, as nesting as, it, as it's ever been for uh, any of our kids, which is great. Like, I like, I like remodeling, remodeling our house every <laughs> time we have a kid because it always turns, turns out like our house is better. So right, right now, now, if you look behind me, like our my room, my our office is is a mess. Um, and so I got this, and I thought we were doing a pretty good job because we were already like 
remodeling our garage and like I was finishing all this patchwork and, and stuff and you know we've already spent a good month in the garage making the garage have extra storage so we can have a place to put everything for the new kid um, and for the other kids stuff. Um, and, then and then we've also, also been watching, watching on Netflix, Netflix Queer Eye, where, where they go they in and they like remodel the guy's house, house you know, people's houses, houses, they remodel, you know, they give makeovers. makeovers. Um, um, and <laughs> so, so in this in heavy, heavy nesting, nesting stage, stage um, um, yes, yes, baby, baby 2.0, awesome. awesome. In this in heavy, heavy nesting, nesting stage that we've been going in, I get a text saying, hey, what, what, I want to queer eye our house. house. <laughs> I'm like, like okay, okay, what, is, what, does, what does that mean? Do we need Bobby and the gang to come over? And, you know, if Tan could just dress me, that would be, that's all I really need. He does live in Utah already anyways. Um, but um, I'm like, okay, what does that mean? She's like, I want to just remodel every room in our, <laughs> in our house. Our living room, uh, bedrooms, bedrooms, the office. I'm like, uh, okay. At this point, I just say, okay, why not? It can't get any, I mean, it's only going to get remodeled for the better, right? So, so that's, that's where we're, we're at. at. Um, um, we're looking to do some pretty big renos. But it's, but it's like, like kept me from, from doing Redbeard red stuff. stuff. Like I haven't, I haven't touched, touched this, this in, you know, since last week. And, and, and uh, yeah, just, just smile and nod. That's right. right. I, just I just smile and nod. But it's kept me from like doing any art in my free time. So if I don't do art in the mornings, then I'm, you know, doing renos in the house. And like me, you ask me like, oh, what do you want to do with the renos? And I'm like, oh man, I'm an artist. I want to do big things, which is not, you know, when you have a time deadline and, and budgets to keep. But I want to like, oh, I want stainless steel everything and wood accents and and then, and then, you know, you know shrubberies, and, but that's probably not realistic. But maybe it is, I don't know. So, in a couple of weeks I may have a new area to work in. Which can only mean good things for us, right? For the streaming. Secret corridors. Okay. So, so I'm going to have a, my dream house one day. That's just how it's going to be. In my office, I'm going to have an office for myself. It will be moderately, moderately spaced, just probably probably the size of this room right now, which isn't very big. But it will have a bookshelf on one wall. And it will have a secret book that you pull, and that bookshelf opens up where you can go in, and I'll have a little tiny theater room or I can preview anything I want. That's going to happen. So, if you don't think it's going to happen, then suck it. And then I'm going to be on MTV Cribs and be like, yeah, man. Is MTV Cribs still a thing? Like, I don't think I've watched MTV for at least 12 years, 13 years, 15 years. Ah, thanks, 3D Modeler underscore look dev. Yeah, this yeah, is this from, is from concept, concept artist Patrick Bolonovsky. He's he's an awesome, awesome concept, concept artist and great, great dude. dude. 
and he did the uh, this is part of like he did the draw this in your style um, character So I thought, hey, that's kind of fun. I could model that. That could be fun. And so here we are. Um, you want to bust HP Lovecraft similar to the one Adam West had on the old Batman show to trigger the secret door. Yeah. Okay. okay, so, so the, the the studio, studio that I'm working, working at, at, we're we're, we're um, doing, doing some, some renovations, renovations too, too. and yeah. anyways, long, long story short, short, we needed an entrance. entrance. We needed a way to like it. it this, this is this is, this is in, in the past, past by the way, way. Um, um, but we, we needed, needed an access, access a way to let people get in the elevator that were visiting or bringing things to because we were trying to like lock down everything. Um, and I pitched the idea, well, what if we just had a ins an inconspicuous bust, a bronze bust, um, and I wanted it to be of Tim Sweeney, the, the CEO and founder of Chair. Or, not Chair, but Epic Games. Um, and then you just flip it over, just like the Batman, and hit the button, and then you'll be able to be let in. I don't think I don't there think would be anything, anything cooler than that. We do have a secret. We do have a secret theater room in our studio, though, which is pretty awesome. Which is like when I went and, and interviewed, they gave me the tour of the studio. And that was like the first thing. And I'm like, oh, this is the place. And I knew it, And I knew I was home. Just checking the chats, da 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 da. If anyone knows how to stream from restream to Facebook, again, let me know. I'd love, I'd love to get onto that. Um, mo, how do you mode Caleb? How's it going? Yes, I've got some echo today. Oh, you know what that is? Let me turn that off. I know how to fix that. That's one of those things I know how to do. How's that? Is that better? Did the echo come off? I'm assuming that the echo came off. This happens every once in a while where like this thing just automatically turns on. Uh, Mode Caleb, let me know if that if that's sounding better for you. Yes, I did it. Okay. Whew. Oh man, how embarrassing. No, for some reason, every time like I open up to re to like stream, it one can't find my mic, and so I have to import my mic every single time, and then it turns on this stupid setting where it like echoes, and I'm I normally turn it off. Yeah, less sold out stadium. <laughs> Maybe that's what I wanted is a nice sold out stadium feel. Hope everyone's having a good summer. Is everybody melting this summer, actually? Because, like, it's been 100 degrees here in Utah. And I know it's been, like, blazing hot in California, too. Okay, let's turn on my body. And let's work a little bit on the body today, too. I 
Now, again, this is like, this is made to be just as fast as I can get it done type of sculpt. So, <laughs> that looks awesome. Um, so, I'm not doing the full body or the hands. I'm literally just trying to get this. And then I'm good. 100 degrees? Yeah. It's so hot. Oh my gosh. And we're coming to California next month in like middle of August. And I fear that we're going to melt. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this white, red-headed, pale skin of mine doesn't do well in the sun. Surprise, surprise. I turn into a lobster. Okay, those are the breast eye, shoulders, feet, legs, calves, midsection. Okay, I'm going to delete the rest. Delete. Okay. The hands. I love doing hands. But I'm going to delete those just because they do take up quite a bit of time. Delete the feet. Um, and then I don't know if you guys joined me last week. This I originally started with just the block in from my um, my El Muerte chick that I did. Feel. Like I missed something. Like I deleted something I didn't want to. Oh well. We'll, fi we'll figure that out. Patry. Zero two. Zero one. Have I had a chance to... Um, I haven't had a chance to catch your recent stuff, but have you adapted your workflow much within the new features of ZBrush 2018? That's a great question, man. Well, um, actually, so the my workflow hasn't really changed. The, the ZBrush 2018 has got some great features, but none that I really use. Um, this is what I'm looking for. Where's this? Yeah, because like the the Sculptress Pro is a really awesome feature, um, but it's also something like I use Dynamesh maybe once in my workflow. I don't really use it often at all. <laughs> um, so that's one that I I've I've never really used or played around with. I've played around with um, the other one is the uh, the cones like the modular cone hard surface. Um, I hate working really high high polys um, it's something that really frustrates frustrates me because it's it's hard to work with and you can make things look real crappy real quickly um, by doing it that way so I um, I haven't really you know done too much because it doesn't it, the features are awesome and I think they're going to help a lot of people but overall it's it doesn't really affect um my workflow too much that makes sense <laughs> yeah those modifiers scare me like the cones, the modular, the modifier cones, like where you're, I mean, people that know it do really cool stuff. Um, but I also like the versatility of like placing a lot of big objects and then being able to move them around until I feel like I have to commit and then I'll finally like Dynamesh. Um, But, you know, it takes me so long to get there and feel, like, happy about that.
like mainly the the only thing that I really do is is hair <laughs> um, in Dynamesh. Like, and I still, you know, this is four thousand, five thousand um, stuff. Ooh, the UI widgets. Yes, the UI widgets. I don't, I don't mess with that. Ain't no, ain't ain't, ain't nobody got time for that. Um. So yeah, like I, I think they're really cool. The things that I really want to see um, in the future, uh, I want them to kind of revamp their layers. I think we maybe talked about this. I want them to revamp their layer system to maybe work a little bit more like Photoshop's or or Painter's um, substance, where it, they have maybe opacities, different types of opacities. You have um, a saturation functionality would be really cool. I'd love for them to revamp their um, their Z Sphere rigging so it works better. Start and get the pose, just the head tilt a little bit. A real world, <laughs> yes, units would be great. <laughs> Any types of like, if ZBrush just said, you know what, we have a unit. It's a Z unit, and it's only like this is only applicable to ZBrush, but you can have control over it. <laughs> so right now, like everything's in a general size until you like manually tell it to export and say, okay, I want you to be this unit size but just to have like a unit of reference to I think would solve so many problems like I grabbed someone's file the other day and it was like it was giant like the the largest I can make my brush size was this big and I'm like oh man I don't and I don't know if that is because of that's how he was modeling it or or what I have no idea But um, to be able to say, oh, convert to this size. And so it would, it would just be real nice. It would be real nice. They did announce a bunch of presenters and the sculpt off for the ZBrush Summit today, though. That was cool. Um, cool to see a lot of names that I know of, of artists that are that have been kicking ass lately. Like their their work has really has been sweet. So. Um, yes, the Shane Olsen ruler, like, we, we've been using that at Disney Interactive, like, 
for everything because without that like it was it was mayhem trying to figure out the size but because we figured that out uh, it, it has worked just great Um, I need to download that and, and start using all my OBGs and my coming in as little specs. Sucks to have to resize it and reorient. Um, yeah, I I still don't know what's the best solution for that actually, because like the ruler is good mainly for three D printing, but it it doesn't see. Um, it's good for 3D printing and I guess for exporting, like if you have a generic size. What is this? Oh, it's an old boob. I don't need that. Um, so, yeah, I, I still don't know what the best workflow is from that, unless you're like bringing a Gozeed object in from the beginning from my... Uh, Inner boob. <laughs> the <laughs> yes, it was her heart boob. We've all got them. See, sometimes when I'm getting like weird, like see, I'm getting some weird pinching because this all started off with a cylinder, or not a cylinder, probably a cube or a, a polysphere. I like to z remesh it. This is like a, a different type of way to um, to dynamesh, kind of, <laughs> when you're working so low. Now the topology is just a little bit better to sculpt on. Oh, but it did com it did combine them, which I don't want to do. So auto group. Oh no! Wait a second. Okay. Auto group. Now, if we keep groups. And I've got to turn off symmetry. There we go. Much better. And the reason I don't want to combine them is because I get a really great effect um, it looks they start to look like boobs when they you know the cleavage area specifically when they're not actually one mesh if they're two different meshes so how do I prevent that um, so what I do so they don't become that is I first make sure they're different polygroups and then t when you Z remesh keep groups on and turn off symmetry and then um, it's that's a little bit trickier when you have to when you get into uh, to combining them and I'll show you I'll show you that because you kind of have to do some tricky stuff which I've started doing with the arms and and now we're gonna test out with the boobs I've never done it with the boobs before because I normally don't make boobs this big <laughs> um, let's 
so we'll do a test to see if this will work. Hey, how's it going, River? I'm just going to plop some references down. Um, as I'm doing this back, I always use references. I, I mean, you can study something a million times, but I like to use references. I use this thing. It's called um, Pure Ref. It's awesome. So what it does is I can just click and drag straight onto it from like images from anywhere, either they're local or from the internet. And it's really quick, really easy, pure ref. Um, so I'll just pull it quick. And the cool thing is, like, you can crop it. These are all, whoops, undo. You can, like, let's say I just want this one or just that little bit or something. I'm letting you guys see kind of the reference I'm looking at. Really, these are just reminders of like muscle layouts, um, shape languages, and then that's kind of it. Maybe one more like just general reference. Um, whoops. Kidoki doki doki. I should probably look at my reference too. <laughs> Let's hide the hay here. And I don't really need to go into too much. So I'm just basically laying out some general, you know, some general muscles. But this is going to be quickly, like, resolved. <laughs> Um, I got a, a link to Pure Ref, or pretty easy to come by. Yeah, just Google Pure Ref. 
uh, it's as it'll be the first. Oh, there it is. There's a link right there. Thanks for thanks, Resner Rage. I'm horrible at reading names. <laughs> um, yeah, the Resner Rage is that's it. That that's awesome. Hey, that's the one that I use. Um, you use Quadro, but it's a little bare bones. What's that called? Yeah, the Pure F is like is it's super easy. You have to learn the controls. They've got a little bit of different controls, but it's it's really powerful and you can save off your reference, you know, thing that you make. Just gonna grab a couple more. Doki, Dok, Dok Avi. That's how you say it. Dok Avi. How's it going? Welcome to the, welcome to the show. So I finally got my cousin to watch um, one of the scariest movies for me, and I've decided that this is one of the scary movies for myself, and it's probably not going to be a universally scary show or movie but it was really terrifying to myself. Um. <coughs> I made it. Um, and and so and the, the movie that I saw Specs, how's it going? Yes. Um, the movie that I saw that 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 I thought was really scary and maybe isn't um, so good. How long have I been going? I've been going for about an hour. 
So we've got the whole night ahead of us. Yes, hello, welcome from Mexico, Mexico, Rick. Rick Pastor. <laughs> yes, that's the movie. Catwoman with Halle Berry was terrifying. Oh my gosh. Um, no, I, which I haven't seen that, by the way. Um, no, the, the movie that I saw that was really scary to me was... Um, called the fourth kind it's okay this will be recorded I think it's gonna be up on YouTube for a while um, let's see what I got here It's called the fourth kind, and it's like this that old like um, based off real events type of thing. Um, you know, supposed to be real. Uh, yes, you're blocking in the figure. Yes, <laughs> bees, bees. You're the man. Bees on man. That's a great name. Um, good. Anyways, so I made him watch this. I guess I didn't make him, but he went and he watched it from his own free will. Um, and he wasn't scared at all. Like, Honestly, I think it's a movie that I was in when I watched it in a state of frame. That it was like it was very terrifying to me, but to the average person, it probably wasn't. Um, it is because I took the movie in a completely different context than what I think that they were planning on doing, um, but they meant to. Um, and so it was like, it was extra scary because I was just in that state of mind and like all these things were lining up. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is what this movie is really about. And then I would, then I, you know, oh yeah. Forgive my horrible anatomy right now. I'm literally just trying to have something there that I can build on. So this is not an anatomy lesson, nor am I trying to make it. Um. Da 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 da. <laughs> I watched that when I was in high school. Um, yes. <laughs> hey, dude, don't I? I only saw it was part of a double feature in a drive when we killed two coolers of beer in the first 45 minutes. It was so bad. <laughs> Probably was, was more entertaining, though. Um, it was creepy when they start talking in Babylonian, that flick. Yes! Terrifying when they start talking in, in Babylonian and that. Um Oh snap! Okay, da, da, da. um, it's creepy when they start talking. Oh wait, I meant to email you about it. portfolio criti critiques this week. Yeah, specs, please do. Just send me an email, um, and then I'll get back to you at, when I as soon as I can. Um, but don't hate me if it's if it takes a, a day or two. But I normally try to make it faster than that. 
Anyways, so let me give you the context of like why it was terrifying to me. So my guilty pleasure is I like to watch scary movies by myself because my wife hates them. So... So let's start there. Given that I'm watching this movie by myself and I was expecting it not to be very scary because, it, oh, it's PG-13. Um, and I was, like, expecting it to just be about, you know, just what it says. Like, this is going to be about about aliens. But I was just on that kick of, like, watching a bunch of, of like, YouTube documentaries about possessions and ghosts and and stuff and you know I'm I consider myself a, a religious man um, and they're like all of a sudden like halfway through the movie I'm like wait a second these these aren't these this isn't talking about ghost encounters it's talking about like alien encounters like not alien, not alien encounters this is talking about like possession encounters like the reason why these people are doing all this stuff and like everything started adding up like because there's all these stories of like people that possessed react the way that they do in that movie now i'm fully aware that this movie is fake it's not real footage that they had that reenacted it's you know it's completely fake I get it, but they're hitting on some some points of like, oh man, like this is this is some deep stuff going on here. Anyways, um, he's got these like high traps, which is kind of cool. Anyways, this is a long story, and I keep stopping. But the the moral of the story is by the end of it when she's like, you know, they're not God, but they want you to think that they're God. I'm like, all of the coincidences of this is this isn't a story about about um, uh, alien abductions, but it's about possession and that like stuff. Cre that stuff creeps me out because that it's a scary thing. Um, and so, like, by the end of the movie, I am, I, were, I was watching it downstairs, and I am on the top stair of my stairs, looking down, watching, and I'm holding my, my pug, my dog at the time, and I'm just, like, holding it, watching this thing, you know, and it's, like, two in the morning at this time, and so it, the movie ends, and, like, I'm watching the credits, and I'm coming down, and I come back down, and then they play an audio clip from a guy from Utah that's like terrified he just saw something in the sky and and he doesn't know what it is and he's terrified like what if they come back and he's like crying um, this truck driver so it's like it's kind of terrifying okay okay so give me a break gosh Um, and so I'm like, okay, freak, I'm terrified. So I stay up another hour watching like episodes of the office or something or like Gilmore girls to, to bring back, um, love and happiness into my life <laughs> as I'm just in this darkest hole of like, this is terrifying to me. Um, And so I finally calm down, and I and I'm uh, like, okay, I gotta go to bed. I've gotta take the dog out one last time before I go to bed, and 
So I, I go... Um, I go take him out and I'm standing out on our little deck that we have. <laughs> and I'm... My dog is out, you know, into the darkness. I'm looking up in the sky and I'm looking out and all of a sudden I hear Guido, my dog, stop. Everybody loves the Gilmore Girls. It's great. They talk so fast. Um, <laughs> and he stops and he's looking. And I look at him as he's looking out into the darkness and he's just stopped. And then all of a sudden I hear this bang and it, something runs out from underneath um our little deck that I had that I was standing on and I lose it. I'm flipping out and it was a cat. It was the neighbor's cat. But I, it was so terrifying. So like instantly Guido, you know, my dog comes back in and like I put him down and I go in my bedroom to go to sleep and I turn on every single flipping light that I can find <laughs> because I was just terrified. And then, like, my wife comes home late. She's at a book club, so she doesn't come home until, like, you know, three. Um, so she gets home, and she's like, um, watch this another scary movie, Matt? <laughs> I said, yes, I don't want to talk about it. Anyways, uh... <laughs> There are two horror movie flicks on Netflix. I keep trying to find the time. Which ones? I need good recommendations. Which ones are you trying to find to watch? Um, Gilmore Girls is great. The sound's horrible. What sound? Is my sound horrible? Is this sound horrible? Or is the is the uh, this stuff going horrible? Wacky Zoe. Um, try Australian news clips to cool down with the next time. <laughs> I'd love that. The story. <laughs> oh, the story sounds horrible. Yes, it was horrible. Thank you. Thank you for realizing that. Because I was out of my mind. I was going out of my mind. I was so scared. And it took like two days to calm down. The next day, like I'm, I am trying to do all that I can to confirm that that movie was fake. You know, it's kind of the sa similar to to the feeling that I had when um, when I watched uh, what's it called? You know, this I'm just gonna dynamish these. So at this point, I. Let's work on this back just a little bit more. It's just not the shape that I want. Um, the try the Babadook. I like the Babadook. The Babadook. Um, oh, thanks, Matt Johnson. Uh, yeah, this is a custom UI that I've I've had and, and been used have used for a really long time. It is available um, through my through my uh, tutorials, my Gumroad tutorials. If you look on the link there, um, what do I think of the new Stephen King's The It? I actually just rewatched it today. Um, I really like it. <laughs> you know, watching it. It, it's not like I mean it is it's it's well done it's really well done um I liked the it the remake I'm excited to see what they do with the second half because like I think the second half on the original was the week you know was where it got really weird um and I think that's how it is in the book too is it gets pretty weird after that. After like when they when the kids grow up and they have lives, but it'll be interesting to see how much they change because there's like they changed a lot, but it was it was really good. I like what they did. Uh, 
Let's start dynamishing these arms together, at least. Merge down. Merge down again. Um. Yeah, the the cast. I saw that Renzer. Like the cast, I think is perfect. That's when you know, like, they're in the right direction. Is when they've got they're getting the right actors for the job. Um, a lot of times you see they just are getting whoever is is popular in the moment, and they actually have like some solid solid actors for the sequel, which is going to be sweet. Um, one of my other favorite, like, horror movies as of late, uh, and, and on Netflix I thought was really good, was Hush. If you haven't seen Hush, he's really, is really pretty, like, I, I think it was an interesting take. Like, that and, um, and, uh, The Quiet Place. Like, The Quiet Place I wouldn't consider a real horror, because, I mean, it is more like a family story. Oops. But it was, I thought the story was really well told and different from what I was expecting. So I really liked, I really liked what it was doing there. I have not seen the the new Ant Man. I have not seen the new uh, Jurassic World, and I doubt that I'll actually see that one in theaters because I feel like that's one of those movies that I'm going to want to talk through and like be able to make snarky comments with because I just haven't heard great things about Jurassic World. Um, I've got a question that says, sorry to take you off for your movies, but how was your transition from toy industry to the game industry? Um, actually, I was always in the game industry. So with at Disney and Interactive, when I was doing the toys for, for uh, Disney Infinity, we were actually, the, the character crew was handling both the the toys and and the in-game models for all the characters um, and then I even you know after a while started taking care of all the outsource like the mission giver characters too like I wasn't I didn't make them some of them I tweaked but most of them I just provided feedback for Um, so I've always been in the game industry. Um, I've liked that it was just kind of a bonus that we were working on the toys too, because 
the reason, one of the reasons I got into character modeling was because I'm a huge toy collector. Like, um, I've got boxes full of like kid robot stuff and Joe Ledbetter and like, uh, you know, so I've always had this interest in making toys, and so like having the opportunity to be a part of the toy process with Disney Infinity um, it was like a dream come true. And I've been looking for ways to try to get back into like the toy making process. Um, I'd really like to figure out how to to get some good, cool licenses. So I've got some ideas for some things, but I'm not really sure. Um, what's the best approach to get the, the licenses that I'm looking for. So once I'm, I've got a better idea on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was it was a cool ride at Disney. Um it was it was sad to to leave them and then even sadder to hear that they got shut down after I left. Like a month after I left. Um because they had like just such amazing talent there and like the people that I worked with were so awesome. It was that was probably the, a big shock. Like I, I kind of, when I left Disney Interactive, I did have a pretty big feeling that they were gonna cancel Disney Infinity because one, they've, you know, from a very early stage, they kept saying, you know, if if Disney can make more money making a toothbrush, they'll do that. Um, meaning the idea of like, if we give you $10 and you say, you'll give me $20 back, that's awesome. But if we can give that same $10 and you give us $30 back or someone will give us $30 back, we'll do that every single time, no matter what. So seeing that like Disney infinity was successful, it was, you know, it was doing really well. But it wasn't, it was, and plus there, you know, I could get into some, a lot of things of like them, them, they had not great projection specialists who they thought it was going to do crazy amounts. So, and then because it's a toy game, they spent so much trying to make these toys, which were awesome. The toys were great. And I think they were definitely the you know what made the game so successful was having such a good quality toy um so i kind of saw that that i i i had a feeling that they were going to cancel the you know that they would finish the 3.5 and then they would just call it a day um and then start a new project like you know like what you do So hearing that they were closing was a that was a big shock. And it it kind of like I had mixed feelings of like one I was really grateful that I had gotten out when I did, but a two that now my friends were all getting a big hit. Um and going to be stuck in a really hard place because Utah, like in, in LA, there's 
you know, a, the game or movie studio on every on every corner. But in Utah, there's like three. <laughs> We've got three game studios, um, and so the competition to to live to stay in Utah and do what you you know was going to be pretty hard. Um, maybe you can hook up with a well-known artist and make toys for their art. Have you seen the the Max Greck and sculptor? Yeah, his stuff was like those those bones figures. Oh man. I want to get every single one of these. The the girl that they just announced, I don't know if she's up for sale yet. Um I'm oh man, they dropped the price. Oh. It was at 150. I might have to get this. But they just did They just did the girl. Let's see if I can find the the girl. Um yeah, check out this. This one's awesome. Super clean, super awesome, like so much personality. So cool. So I want, yeah, it, it'd be fun to, to do that. Um, I did a little bit with, with Brett Bean um, a while ago. Uh, last, maybe a year ago or so. Um, and it was so much fun to be back in like the production world. So I, you know, if if I could do another one with Brett, or you know, I work so well with Brett Bean that it's it it'd be hard to, unless I'm doing it myself to want to do it with anyone else. But the right project, it would be a lot of fun. Um, seeing the success of the likes of Pokemon Go, do you think the Infinity Game and toys would be doing good in today's market? Um, that's a good question. Do I think the Infinity Game would be doing good in today's market? No. <laughs> um, I think the Toy to Life category was kind of hit the peak at Infinity 1. Like, that's when everyone was really... It was kind of like the Guitar Hero and Rock Band. and It kind of hit those fat, that fad of like... Um, and, and it was like really successful for that time. And then past that time, it, it you know, it just had, it just, they couldn't do anything to re-innovate or anything. And I think that was kind of true with Infin with uh, Disney Infinity, that I, I think, unless they did some massive retool retooling to make the game more mobile and more accessible, um, it, it still wouldn't be it still wouldn't do well to the, in today's market. But they were some cool figures. Yeah. It looks like they dropped the price down to to oh, um Brett is awesome. Love his work. I don't think I saw the final one. Do you have the print at home? Yes. Let me grab it, Renza. Um, yeah. So I do have... Let me... I'm going to just put this puppy right here. So yeah, so this is how and I'm gonna turn on my camera so I can see what I'm what I'm showing you. So this is the the final Brett Bean Redbeard collaboration. This is a concept that he initially made and then we kind of tweaked to make it work for for the uh model. And it just turned out, I think it turned out so well. It was really expensive. We were selling these um, at, I think, 150 bucks. Um, I only have 
three left, I think. And and we're not making any money of these. <laughs> yeah, we did, we we partnered with 3D Mold, so they helped us with the manufacturing and and um, took care of some of the marketing and some of the production stuff. I mean, they did an awesome job. Like uh, back when when Robert Vignon was working with them, um, he did all the tooling on this. So he sliced it up for me, and, and it turned out so nice. Like I don't know if you can see some of these details, but they turned out so awesome. You know, all these little little parts and like these clear bits just really are cool. Anyways, I've got three left that I'm selling for a um, hundred bucks each. If anyone's interested, send me an email. <laughs> um, I never painted one. Uh, they had one painted by the lady who actually did all the the color call out paints for um for the Disney Infinity characters her name's Mara she's awesome probably one of the best hand painters out there um but they didn't follow for some reason the the concept for the paint and i i, I don't like it as much as as just what we had made Brett and i I always meant to go back and like do a quick poly paint of it, but I never did. Maybe that'll be for a stream. Who knows? Now this. We don't need to save. You took a class with uh, with uh, Mold 3D, or 3D Mold, Mold 3D. Who'd you take the class with? Beans on Man, Bees. Oh, you took the Dylan Eckern. I bet that class is gold. I want to take that class. <laughs> um, Dylan is like, he is, he's such an amazing artist and his, he's got such a good design sense to him. Yeah, he's, he's one of those artists that I just, I respect his craft so much and he just has a good way he knows forms he knows shape language you know you get a lot of um, artists that don't that are really good at one or the other you know they're either really good at like at making a 2d con or a 2d concept of 3d or or, or something um, now I'm not gonna worry about this because I'm not too concerned about the overall I'm getting into my <laughs> um, breaking and jumping subjects. Anyways, because I'm not really, I just want this pose. I'm not too concerned about this, like, penetrating. Um, but he's, yeah, you have, like, artists that know how to do one of two things, like how to make a good 2D image and or how to make... Yeah, how to make something, but someone that actually understands shape language and design theory and like he does, um, I think is very rare. And he he's got a great sensibility and and uh, you know he's he's a real he's a good solid class act. Um, you're going to take a class with him this month. Oh, awesome. Yes. Rip Rick, you're going to you're going to love that class. Like he's and he's like hilarious. He's a super funny funny guy. Nothing but great things to say about Dylan and um Yeah, he's he's great. I do want to. I'm serious about wanting to take his class too, because 
because I think that his feedback would is would be very um, valuable. kind of got these buff arms. I'm actually just thinking about how I'm transitioning this. Because I want like certain shapes to pop out like this. These square harsh angles like these repetitive shape language that he's he's made. Um, how's it going? Knitting de dewived. <laughs> Nitten, how's it going? <laughs> yes, Dylan says the most random stuff that is just hilarious, just super funny. Uh, he's He's got a really kind of a dry sense of humor, <laughs> but is so, is so funny. <laughs> Okay, um, let's take our pass of the boobs. I'm going to squish these back just a little bit so they kind of look more like they're being held. Or pressed. We'll put some clothes on her soon enough. Don't worry, guys. Jeez. Um... So earlier we were talking about how to make sure when we dynamesh these, they're separate entities. So this is this is my trick for it. Is what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna select these and I'm gonna mask, I'm gonna turn off symmetry, and I'm gonna you know control tap on one. And I'm going to just take the inside and I'm going to separate it out just a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same with the other, just enough so they're not touching. So this is the key to, to dynameshing and then making sure they're separate and we can bring them back together. So we're going to dynamesh now. Let's do a save. So now that they're not touching, I can merge these down and I can dynamesh these together. And we'll dynamesh at a higher resolution. Not too high. So I can start, go back to symmetry, and I can start blending these back in. Whoa. Is this different than dynameshing with groups on? Yes, so the groups are turned off on this one. So literally it's just, I'm just making sure they're not touching. That there's a space in between the boobs. I do this, this is a very similar technique on, to how I do buttoxes. Just having the meat go up a little bit higher. Um, and so now it's got, let's turn off, let's kill these arms. And just smooth in kind of the end part. But we want, we want that. I mean, I could take off my shirt and just do that for you. I won't. I know you want it, but it's not going to happen. Um, so now that I have 
I've kind of worked out glutes on my anatomy, yes. Glutes. <laughs> Your only anatomy word. <laughs> glutes. <laughs> glutes and chesticles. That's all I know. Um, so now that I have this kind of built out the way that I want, I go to my inflate brush. This is where the magic comes in. And I'm turning off Dynamesh because I don't use it anymore. Once is enough. That's all you'll ever need it for. Actually, I could Dynamesh the head too, but I'm not going to do that. You know why? Because I'm my own man, and I tell myself when I want to Dynamesh and when I don't want to Dynamesh. Anyways, turn on this Inflate, and I'm just going to slowly start bringing them back together. And then you get you get great you actually it actually looks like they start pressing against each other. And they're still separate pieces. The occlusion looks a lot better. Um, you keep the roundness. You can smooth it back a little bit too, and they'll separate, which is awesome. You can look at, you know, that's and that's how you do it. It's really really simple. Um, let's zero mesh this and project the detail as I'm getting ready to merge the head to it and we can start doing some slight posing and start getting her a little bit more on her way there's not much I need to do for for the uh, zero mesh. So what I'm doing right now, oh, it's gonna crash on me. Maybe not. Um, I am. Um, I'm making polygroups that I want the topology to kind of follow. And this one's not super necessary, but I like where I know I'm going to have intersecting joints. So that's probably it. And then I can go back and I'm going to do zero mesh. So I've just made where I want my loops, edge loops to follow. You know, just simple things. Um, keep my polygroups smooth, maybe down. And I want to target that maybe a little higher. We'll see. Time to save. I should have saved. Thanks, Nitin. Yeah. She's coming along. She's getting better. I'm, the anatomy is still not where we want, but I, I don't know if I care about that anymore. So let's go back. Smooth that down a little bit more. The important thing is that one, we have a decent flow of topology and then second is is I want to to match a similar topology to the head's lowest subdivision so if I just go to the head um, and let's get 
So it's actually pretty close. It's not perfect. And, it, you know, some points it doesn't need to be like this. Definitely is fine for for what we're going to be using it for. But mostly it's exactly what I need. I can subdivide this. Actually, I don't want to do any subdivision. Oh, and... might have to redo those boobs as I'm getting some wonky topology through there but because it doesn't really matter I'm gonna turn off symmetry and it will actually keep it'll keep that um, that without merging them Nitin just graduated. Congratulations! Uh, you love three D modeling. Did you did you study art in in is did you graduate high school, college, um, university, a dental school? Okay, so that is better. Actually, I wonder if it lost. Oh, that's why. Okay. One more time. I'm gonna be up all night. Oh, college! Wow, awesome. So, what did you what did you graduate? What what did you major in? Ooh, that topology can go up just a little bit. Am I, am I really doing a late stream tonight? Um, we'll see. I just finished some cold brew and... <laughs> so what I'm looking at is how close this topology is. It looks like it's gonna have some trouble so it needs to be a, just a little higher. Because I'm going to be bridging the neck to the to the body, that's why I want the topology to be close. Because then you won't have any like wonkiness. Not that wonkiness is bad. We love wonkiness. Oh, nice! Working on some freelance tonight. Is it fun freelance? At least are you? Are we enjoying the freelance? That's probably closer. Okay. So now what I want to do is I'm going to copy this head, duplicate that head, and I'm going to delete the higher subdivisions on it. So I just have the low. And I'm going to take my lasso, and I'm going to... Actually, let's cut it right here. And we're going to delete the hidden. Delete hidden. And we're going to take the body we just made. And take this. And I'm going to delete this. Delete hidden. So now we have two holes. Two massive holes. And we're bringing that up to the head. And we're going to merge them down. So now we have the head and the floating torso, and I'm just going to use my bridge, curved bridge brush, with symmetry turned off, and this is key, symmetry's got to be turned off for this. 
and I click and I drag on the edge and then I hold shift and it snaps to the open edge. So now I've got one edge highlighted and then I go to the second edge and I start to click and drag and I hold shift snaps to that edge and then it you know interpolates uh, polys to that. So then I tap to accept and this is this is okay probably as good as I want um, it is flipped though I just turned off double-sided so if I take it and then hit flip I've made hotkeys for these and then I can turn my symmetry back on and I can smooth this stuff out and the topology is not actually too too bad because there's so much space um, have I seen the tis the Disney toy box features yes I <laughs> I have um, it's there it's kind of flattering that they took our designs our toy our uh, infinity designs and made them into figures I wish they had put a little bit of care and love into them because like some of them are literally just straight ripoffs like they're they didn't change anything other than putting joints in them like there's bend in like I'm gonna give you an example so like um this guy uh, Kylo Ren this is one that I posed and Shane modeled um, and for the action figure there's all these bends in the cloth that we, that we had because he's you know he's moving there's motion they kept these same bends in the the figure <laughs> so it just looks it looks horrible so I wish they just had put maybe just a smidgen of love into making the toys actually feel more like toys, I guess. But I love that they, you know, it's cool to see the designs live on in another form. Um, because we, we did put a lot of work into them. Okay, so now... The, the thing that we've got going now is that we have we need to transfer our sculpt onto this. Um, I miss some some uh, steps here. Let's go back. Um, You're at the stage that it'd be nice, <laughs> but it, it it could be a, a whole lot more lucrative if they paid more fairly. Um, getting paid fairly, but considering having no benefits, provide me in five <laughs> gajillion dollars in taxes with each project kills me. Yeah, taxes kill the freelance artists, I swear. Oh, at Hasbro, you gushed about the Infinity figures and grown endlessly about toy, about toy box. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Um, actually, like I I was recruited a little while well before I left um, by Hasbro. To, they they were wanting me to 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 apply for a job up there. Um, in Connecticut, but I had like already kind of accepted the job at chair, so I, I didn't. Um, oh yeah, please do. Um, Nidden, we'll we'll see ya. Yeah, Rhode Island, not Connecticut, Rhode Island. Yes. Um, and I think one of the sculptors actually ended up applying but I think it just didn't end up 
working out. So what I've done is now I've subdivided up. And I'm going to transfer just the topology. So I'm just turning on the head, make the high head. And I'm just going to project. Project all. I guess I should go up. Oh, this should probably go to my high. That's what. So now I have my high and the neck I'm just going to re-sculpt because I want it to mesh, mesh a little bit better. Um, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. But now I want to do the same with this. Maybe get up a little bit higher. Blur invert, go up to my high, and then I'll go to my high res body sculpt. Turn that on so you guys can see I've got that on and I can just do a project all. I don't want to keep the poly paint. Probably get some wonkiness inside the breasted areas. Um, in the spirit of upcoming Comic Con from three who would consider to be the smartest, Richard Need, Han Hank McCoy, and Tony Stark. Which would I consider to be the smartest? Uh, <laughs> that's a good one. Um, ooh, let's see. Now I'm just double checking. This is how bad I am. I'm double checking. I, I know who these guys are. Hank McCoy. I don't know who Richard Reed is. I know Hank McCoy. Hank McCoy. Probably the the uh, the smartest is probably Bruce Banner. Actually, out of how if we're putting names out there, um, but I do like Tony Stark. Reed is like the. Canonically smartest, super, can, canonically smartest superhero. Okay. <laughs> the, oh, he's Mr. Fantastic. Of course he is Mr. Fantastic. Reed Richards. Um, probably that's what I meant. Reed Richards. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Reed Richards. I still don't know, wouldn't know. I'm not a huge uh, uh, Fantastic Four fan. Don't hate me for that. But maybe it's just because I've been tainted by the movies, and the movies have been so good. Okay, so now that I have the high res sculpt, I can go back. So the neck is like now way off so I can go back in and kind of just get the landmarks back in place of these muscle groups and then also change modify the shape You get this muscle here, 
This on her, it looks to be like fairly prominent. Nitin, I love pizza. Okay, there we go. Um, the Incredibles was the best Fantastic Four movie. Agreed, Bees on Man. Agreed. The Incredibles, man, that movie is so good. Is so good. And I, the sequel was great. I loved the sequel. Not as much as like the original, but like it's hard to beat perfection. But the the sequel I thought for a sequel was awesome was so was still so well done and clever and different you get so many sequels that just rehashed the same story and and that it didn't do that and like it's just good storytelling it's it's a great movie but it's great storytelling Okay, we're going to turn on some of this stuff. It's almost time to start putting stuff. Um, <laughs> the movies are like sliding a junk into a van door. <laughs> That's great. Um, you can watch two hours of Jack Jack fighting the raccoon. Yes! I could watch two hours of Jack Jack fighting that damn raccoon. It was brilliant. It was so well done. So good. Okay, let's get the hair back on there too. Just not well, not the the braid. We're gonna not worry about the, the braid right now. Might have deleted the teeth. That's okay. We're just going to steal the teeth from this one anyways. Teeth. Append. Um, whoops. Um, I am waiting for the new Wreck-It Ralph. Yes. That looks awesome. How you made those hairs. Which ones? The, uh... These ones? The braid? The braid is a simple, just... I didn't make the brush. It is a... Um... An IMM brush. From ZBrush Central. It's just whatever braid brush came up, I just like, I'm gonna take that one, and that will be good enough for now. So... Symmetry still turned on. We're going to blur this. So her neck is really long, and I'm going to change that. And rather than move the head up, I have to move the head down. I'm going to move the body up. So let's, now that she's all together, I'm going to just make some tweaks.
Um, do you play games like S S or C S G O? CSGO. Do I play games like CSGO? No. The only games right now that I am playing, that I would say that I am playing, um, is probably, you know, I'm not playing any games right now. Um, I play Fortnite a little bit because, you know, you have to and you work for the company that makes Fortnite. Um, just kidding. That's just a joke. Fortnite's great. Um, that's and then that's really that's really it <laughs> I play a couple like iPhone games that's like uh, Alto's Adventure it's a really pretty game Um, do you know Mike Clausen? Clausen, Mike. Let's see. I may know Mike. The name sounds familiar. Um, I don't know if I do. Nothing's ringing a bell. I, I don't know. Do you have a, a link? Oh, he's an animator at Epic. Um, no, I don't really know any of the animators. I know a few of the people on the art team, like the the character team. Um, but they are in a different state than than us. So it's it's uh, hard to like know the whole team on Fortnite or on Epic because we're working just completely different you know I'm there in Cary North Carolina and I'm out here in in Utah Oh, you went to school with him. That's awesome. I'm sure he's a good dude. I don't know if I've met anyone at Epic that, like, I haven't liked. Which is really... Is great. Because, like... The... The atmosphere at Epic Games... And Chair, I should say... Is so different from all the other game studios that I've worked for. I mean, I've really only worked for three, but it's by far the best atmosphere. You know, there's not... There's there's not, like, this internal conflict of fighting for your job all the time. 
or trying to outperform each other. Like there's really a, a good understanding of like, we are all on the same team doing this, working for the same end goal and we all support each other. <laughs> and it's, it's like corny to say, but that's very much how it is. Okay, let's start clothing this gal just a little bit. Um, so no cat fights. Yeah, no cat fights at the water cooler. No, no. People are just, we just work and we get things done and we, we support each other and it's, you know, we're all working for the same end goal. And it's understood and, um, it, it's become like this awesome atmosphere to work in. Well, it hasn't become, it, it is, it's, it's always been that way, I guess. Long before I got there. So is this just fun um, for fun or for work? Yeah, this is just for fun. Like, I, I like to just make these, and this is part of, this is a concept by, um, again, for those who, who don't know, a uh, concept artist by the name of Patry Bol Bolanovsky. Um, really awesome dude, awesome concept artist. And... He, there's this challenge, I don't know if you guys have seen on the social medias, but that's like draw on your style and he did this and I thought, hey, this is kind of, this could be kind of fun to model So I know I'm not necessarily doing this in my style. Um, so. But it's, it's a cool, I think it's a pretty cool style to, to work in. Yeah, it does seem like the game industry is pretty socially healthy outside of big cities. I think I agree with that. And like Salt Lake isn't a very big city, but the game, you know, it was Salt it was Disney and it was EA and 
besides the project and the people, the management, I think, at both of those companies was horrendous. It was so bad. There was so much poisonous, like, politics going on. It made you, like, fear. It pitted employees against each other, and it did... Um, it did a lot of bad things. But, uh, Chair, Epic Salt Lake, however you want to call it, um... It's been nice because we're out of the city and it's a small branch of Epic. It's only like, you know, 30 employees. And. Oh, I didn't accept it. Um, so it's. It's, um, it's been really nice. It's been a different change of, of pace and. A lot of fun on the project being on a smaller team. guy rent desks from a small game studio near, near Baltimore. Everyone is really close. It's been a great experience. Yeah, it's a great experience. Like, you know, our, the art team is, is, you know, five guys. We all sit next, right next to each other. You know, we all collaborate. Um, we all roll ideas off each other. It's, you know, it's a really strong it's a really strong community that they've built. I mean it was not to get too much into it, but one of the reasons leaving Disney was because I thought it was it was pretty poisonous the environment that was there. Hey, uh, Spec Owls. Hey, Matt. Just turn on, turn off the lasso select and turn on rectangle select. Oh yeah, that's true. There we go. Thank you, good sir. keep having it on because I like to be able to select edge loops and you can't do that with with the rectangle select delete hidden delete hidden Some of these. I want all one. So we'll still keep the groups on this, but um, because we don't need... These can now be one shape. As I'm going to not follow it perfectly again. Keep groups. Target. 
Smooth. I know. I actually like it's kind of hard to, to talk and sculpt well <laughs> at the same time. So a lot of times after the stream I'll just stop and I'll take 30 minutes to clean up all the gunk that I've not paid attention to because I'm telling a story or replying to comments or whatever, but I think it's I, I still enjoy this. It's, it's a lot of fun. Ooh. No, I'm gonna just keep them separate. It looks like they're separate here. Maybe I'll dynamesh them together. But I will... I don't need the nipples anymore. <laughs> I don't know if I needed the nipples to begin with. <laughs> Oh, X, X, no symmetry. Yeah, Blends, it, when there is a common goal and the objective is clear, the environment is always more pleasant. Yes, yes. And you're not trying to compete against the other artists or other people. It's, you know, you're working towards one awesome, beautiful, Great goal. What is this geometry? Let's try that again. Let me go just a little bit higher. it is like really wonky ge geometry but if I make it its own I agree I love pizza I agree. Mm. Must be some wonkiness going on. I wonder if I just make it all one. See how that does. This is some pretty funky topology on the top, so... We'll see how it works. Normally, it, it handles even funky topology really well. That's better. Okay. I can work with that. So because of this is kind of just hugging X. seeing the inside of the armpit. I don't really care. <laughs> I 
I'm going to give it just a little bit of thickness. Ooh, not like that though. Ooh, you know what we got to do? We got to turn off because it's going to start interpenetrating. So no alignment and no attraction. Then it can penetrate with itself all it wants. There you go. Flynn Rider from Tangled. Um, I, um, hey, we'll see you, bees. Thanks for stopping by and for your comments tonight. I want to know why there is no symmetry with my mechanical pencil. <laughs> it's mechanical. That's right. That's a good point. Why? <laughs> um... Uh, so your plan is to make Flynn Rider from Tangled. So, you are welcome to do that, Mr. I Love Pizza. My recommendation, if, if you're open to hearing it, is to not do that. Um, unless it's for a personal study and you're not going to show it to anyone, you don't, don't do it. And this is the reason why. Um, the reason why you shouldn't do it is because Flynn Rider's already been made in 3D. And people know what he looks like and people recognize him, right? And the chances of you making a better looking Flynn Rider than the Tangled version um, is probably not high. And I mean this to like any 3D artist <laughs> is, is probably not high. So and immediately people will, no matter what, will compare your Flynn Rider to the actual Flynn Rider. And as good as it's going to be, it's not going to be cinematic quality. Unless you have a ton of cinematic experience of compositing, rendering. Um... This is not scaling the way I want. Sorry to stop in mid. But so as as much as like I it's good it could be a good practice, but don't show anyone. And because making a 3D thing that's already been made, I just recommend that's like one of the my big no no's. Um is don't don't make something that's already been made in 3D. I know that unless like you're putting a fresh style on it, but but maybe don't. Um, couldn't that be said about making a realistic face? Like, would it be way more judgmental? Uh, would it like we would be way more judgmental of what we see every day with everyone? Yeah, yeah, um, and there are like. The, the the difference between making a realistic face and making and remaking a character that's already been made is uh hold on is um people know, know what it looks like in 3D already and unless you're matching that exactly it's it's only going to turn out bad. You make a realistic face in 3D, that's showing your artistic skill of, like, this is a, a 3D CG face. Like, uh, Frank Zing, who's an incredible, incredible um, 
3D sculptor, like he does, he does that. Hoist. Um, I can't remember his his name. Hoisel something or other is also like incredibly talented at, at matching, but that's already not somebody hasn't made that in 3D yet. They're showing that they can match. I mean, it's it's a little different, I guess. And you can do it, but just don't put it in your portfolio for sure. I mean, you can do it, just don't put it in your portfolio. I guess is is my number one um, recommendation. Like as a study, sure do it but don't put it in your portfolio um and that's and that's probably why i recommend to not do it is because at this point when you're graduated you want you want to get a job in the industry and you want to do things that will help that will boost your portfolio and that's going to be one of the number one things like there's maybe one um three like 3D fan art of something that was already 3D that I that that said, "Oh, okay. That's good." One out of all the uh, out of all of the ones that I've ever seen. Um so unless it's like your own take and it's a well designed thing and and um I just don't think it's a it's a good idea. I hope that makes sense. Any of those ramblings make sense. <laughs> Frank and Hoyce, Hoysen. Yeah, that's right. It's similar to tracing in traditional drawing, yes. I would think. So it's great for it's you know, you can do it for a study. I think it's it's great, you know. Early on I would do um I did uh, anatomy studies for, or not anatomy, so sculpting studies of um, Milton um, Call. I think that, I believe that's his name. Milt Call. No, not Milt Call. Um, Kent Milton, sorry, I get them confused with Milt Call and Kent Milton. Um, so he's he's a, a fantastic sculptor, like traditional sculptor, like just pulling up some of Kent Milton stuff. He's honestly one of my biggest inspirations because he has just great forms. Like look at this, just beautiful forms, great personality. Um, and he sculpted all these traditionally. Um, I've done studies of trying to like sculpt his Rapunzel or his uh, Scar face um, in ZBrush as just a study, but I wouldn't post that because it's not. It wouldn't be in my portfolio because it's just it's not mine. Sorry to be the buzzkill on this subject, but I, I've seen a lot of portfolios where they do have that. Like you'll see, you know, an incredible character, someone from The Incredibles, or or uh, you know something, and, and it's really kind of like a buzzkill because it's never gonna, you know, and it's never gonna be as good as the original. Unfortunately, that's just. That's just kind of the fact of that. Uh, 
Um, hey, I sent you an email. Really, in true no rush. I just want to hear your two cents. Yeah, I'll I'll check it out after after the stream for sure. Um, what's his name? His name is is Kent Milton. Just he's one of my favorite guys, and I I've you know had personal conversation with, with him a number of times like this like look at this so appealing oh man his stuff is so good it's so strong this isn't him um but like look at that look at that so good everything that he did was so good Ugh. his uh his kubo stuff is great my gosh so good. Where's his Kubo stuff? His Kubo stuff, some of my favorites, and some of his newer stuff, but it's so strong. Like, the shapes are just so strong. Look at that. Here, Kent Milton Kubo. Yeah so awesome I gotta hold this guy oh that monkey I gotta hold Kubo there it was so great um trying to decide of the best treatment for this My tunes died. Well, I'm just going to be okay with that. Um, da -da 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 -dun. Oh man, I'm missing all these things. Uh, Matt, how's it going? Hey, Hugo! Yeah, Hugo, um, what you're saying is like, if you're not bringing something new to the piece, then don't do it. Like, there was one, there's one really cool sculpt of Mr. Incredible that's different from the original that is really, that's, that's a little eye-catching. Um, I wouldn't say it's, it's better than the original, but it's a different take, for sure, and that's, I think that's what is necessary, right? Um, yeah, it's starting to come together. So now it's time to start kind of hitting some of these style points that I think are important. Some of these edges.
Am I a Spyro fan? Yes, I do know what Spyro is. Yes, I am a Spyro fan. The Spyro and... Um, he was like Spyro and Ban Banjo-Kazooie and... Um, um, I can't believe I'm blanking on the the Crash. Crash Bandicoot. They were like some of my big influences actually as a kid. Like those were the games that I played. I take some time. I just finished a graduation a couple weeks ago. Kent Milton. Now let me let me write that out for you. Kent Milton. Super, super nice guy. Um, he gave me some great advice. Um, and was like a dream to talk to. And like, luckily I hit him at a time where nobody else was around him. Like before the crowds came in at CTN. And I was lucky enough to, to be able to spend some, some quality time with him. And now, I'm just going to sketch out some, some landmarks. Actually, let's do this. We're going to duplicate this. Do another save, and I'm going to sketch out some design stuff. a little too harsh. Let's go back to this and just bring the intensity down. Um, do you think using an, an armature in ZBrush like real world sculpt sculptors do is okay or not, or should be done? Um, so are you talking about like when you're like starting with a pose? Is that, is that what you're talking about blends? Um, say a skeleton. Um, yeah, I don't see, I don't see a problem with it. Um, what I recommend, especially when, when learning anatomy, uh, is to, to sculpt it without using a base mesh, like you're building to sculpt things from, and this is like, it's not just anatomy, it's like building anything, um, is to first build it without a base mesh. So you start learning proportions and forms. Uh, and this is similar to what, you know, traditional sculptures do, right? Is that they build a wire 
frame, they're not they're not starting with a pre-existing mesh. Um, and um, and then they they build off stuff from there. So, yeah, I think once you have a good sense of anatomy, yes. <laughs> um, once, if you're learning, then build. I recommend, you know, taking your time to learning um, principles and forms and whatnot. I know that. He doesn't she doesn't necessarily have some of this stuff but I like it <laughs> and does one truly learn anatomy? No. <laughs> I, you look at like even even uh, um, Ryan Kingsland, who's probably his knowledge on anatomy is probably the greatest out of any digital sculptor there is, possibly even traditional sculptor that there is right now living. <laughs> um, but he still doesn't know it all and he knows and he knows that and he like admits it but he studies and he puts in so much work um that he knows every name of the majority of everything <laughs> and it's it's way impressive and it's a little bit intimidating if you've ever taken one of his classes because he speaks that language like he speaks the language of of anatomy <laughs> so well and so fluidly that it's hard to keep up when he's trying to explain um, what he's doing sometimes and so it's a little frustrating it can be a little frustrating but it just it actually just like to me it inspires me of like oh man I need to step up my game <laughs> um, and, I, and that's something still that's like I do in my free time is I like study just anatomy do like torso studies um i don't really post those ever because they're just meant for me but yeah i don't think anyone truly learns anatomy <laughs> oh yeah Yeah, Ryan Kingsland, he's he's great. A little a little much if you're not used to that kind of teaching. Um, but very inspiring. So we're gonna try something here.
Kent Kugo. <laughs> Kent Kugo, yeah. Yeah, Kent is, he's been a big inspiration. As, as soon as I got into, like, character um, design, his stuff has been so influential to me. Split unmasked points. That's better. Oh my, it's almost 11 o'clock my time. I might have to end soon. I'll go um, five, 10 more minutes.
This one we might just carve in. <laughs> thought this is going to be a marathon marathon stream. Hey, we'll see you, Pizza. Thanks for yeah. I'll I'll check out your DM on Instagram. Um, yes, thanks for your questions. Um, plans. <laughs> this I mean, it's it's always a marathon. No, I've got work in the morning and renovations <laughs> to the house. <laughs> Pizza sliding those DMs. Hot and fresh. This may just be a little overkill that I could just sculpt these. Especially if I want to be fast. But apparently I don't want to be fast. I always like start, I always do this, by the way, let's just point out how I always do this, um, that I always like, oh, I'm just going to do a quick sculpt and then it ends up, oh, I'm going to make this the best effing thing that I've ever effing done. But I don't say F. That's one of the things I don't say. Um, da, 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 da. Well, I have to go. Hugo, you have to go. No, he helped me so much with the concept. I think it's been quite some time to re reformulate ideas and it was helpful. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. Thanks for your comments tonight again and for coming by. Um, I tried to do an eye demo for a viewer the other day, turned into a whole damn face. <laughs> and then took 30 minutes, and the whole time I was like, why am I doing this? Just stop. Yes. I think that's every every time I do anything. I'm like, oh, this is just a, this is a quick little lunch sculpt and then like a month later I'm like uh oh, now if I just take this and this and this yeah thus the idea of a quick sculpt <laughs> who was who was I talking about Andrew Hickenbottom <laughs> and the idea of like we we're just comparing 2D art to 3D art because, like, 2D artists are busting out concepts every day, and it's like, oh, this is nothing. Um, and then, thus, lowly 3D artists that take 
a million years on one thing. Um, hmm. maybe I'll do a quick pose. That were his last words. I'll do save. We're going to attempt a really quick um, <laughs> pose, and then I'm going to call it. Let's just make sure none of these are named the same. Extract four. I should go through. And name everything, but I don't want to. Not right now. Okay, so let's do just because I want to give her some expression now. Um, now I still posed old school, like I. Ding, 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 ding. Um, Hey, I didn't delete that. Look at that. Um, yeah, last time this was a speed sculpt. This has turned into a full thing. He has been saying, Actually, the first thing I like to do is pose the torso, and this it looks like she's got a subtle twist, so I start from the hips, inside the hips. Try to pray, place this to the, where the spine would actually be. Probably
So I'm just opening up that. So just kind of got these. Uh, kind of pose it from where the the shoulder blade is in that joint, so it can pull this shoulder forward. Maybe rotate it. I'm not going to worry too much about like some of these funky deformations. Um, I know that she's kind of got this 
or shoulders forward kind of thing. I don't want to actually. I could do some of this with just my um, move topology brush. Like the clavicle and the scapula and all this stuff, like I'll, I'll fix. Um, in the in the pose, like out of out of this. some of these beefy trogdor arms.
Okay, so that's... Let's do, I guess... Blur. And we'll quickly get the silhouette for this thing, too. That's actually one of my wife's pet peeves, is that I say, oh, I just gotta quickly do this. It's like, when does it actually quickly become that? When do you actually quickly do something? Oh, sweet. I had to go sing bedtime songs for your kids and grab a tub of Ben and Jerry's. That's a good, that's a good man right there. Yeah, just on, I'm doing a quick pose. Um, the hair's still the template. I mean, everything's still temp, right? Okay, we'll call that a decent. Well, I guess let's just take a, a quick look. We're going to pose that. I'm going to look at just a bit more. Okay, that's a, at least a good reference pose for now. Um, I think it's all hitting the points that I want. If it so pleases you. <laughs> May I suggest the wisp of the hair look good with the hair underneath? Yeah, everything, the hair is, I'm not even concerning myself with the hair. Oh boy. Um, right now it's just like this this is all temp um, I haven't even haven't even considered what I'm actually doing with that yet what I'm really doing with it Sometimes I like to do like a quick uh, value paint. To start seeing if forms are reading right.
just for kicks and giggles. So this is all just for uh, tones. I'm just I just want to maybe get like a work in progress render, but sometimes that's hard to do when you can't when you're missing some of like the key values like the lips. This is also like a quick trick to get approvals when you're showing stuff to your art director you just paint some quick tones in there because like you're not spending really hardly any time oh. you, can, you can do quite a you can sell quite a bit of what is going on without actually having to paint too much which is nice Um, squid tank yes thanks um, yeah I'll, I'll post I'll probably post like a work in progress on Instagram because I've been posting a lot of 2d on Instagram and um, I have a mixed following that doesn't know that I actually do 3d so Where it's like the music that's playing right now is bedtime music. It's like you're going to bed right now. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming out and for everyone's comments tonight. Um, I don't post anything on Twitter. Like I have YouTube or I have Facebook and I have Instagram, and and I just am not quite sure how <laughs> Twitter works. So, like, how do you find people you want to follow? Like, I guess, just like anything else, you just got to use it. I don't use it. Um, but I should. I should post more on Twitter. Um, so, let's... One more. You guys are going to hate me for this one. Oh, you guys are going to hate me so much. Do one more thing. Go watch this. Actually, gonna turn the RGB intensity down, so it's gonna have kind of like a multiplied effect in there. Oh. 
<laughs> so dumb. Anyways, um, Squid Tank rarely uses Twitter either, but you can auto post from Instagram. Yes, so I should probably just start doing that. Um, hey, thanks everyone for coming out. I'm going to call it a night right there. Um, I'll be sculpting again next week, same bat time, same bat channel. Thanks for your comments, for your feedback, and for listening to me ramble this week. Um, as always, check out my tutorials, check out my Instagrams, and bless your all your tiny little hearts to each and every one of you. Um, have they fixed the image upload from Instagram and Twitter? No. It still looks like crap. Renz, Renz or Rage. Um, looks looking good. Hey, thank you so much. In your hand tutorial, hey, thank you so much for picking that up, Io. Um, oh, it doesn't even post the image, just a link. That's horrible. Uh, Squid Tank, it's always nice talking to you again. Harry Manimals, thanks for your comments. Renz or Rage, yeah. Thanks so much. Um, and you guys have a good night. And I don't know how to turn this off, so maybe I'll just keep, just be here all night. <laughs> okay, we'll see you guys.